We're going to review how to set up a PCA. The first thing you're going to need are your physician orders. You will need a second nurse as this is a high alert medication. You'll also need your PCA administration set as well as stickers for that. Inside this packaging, you will find directions on how to prime the tubing should you need that. You will have to get your carrier fluid from your order set. Should always be normal saline and you will need to prime your IV tubing with that. Get that ready to go. You will need your end tidal CO2 oxygen tubing that goes with the PCA and then uh, you'll have your PCA channel as well as the end tidal channel. The patient controlled button should be attached to the back of the channel and you will need to get that plugged in um, when it's ready to use. The PCA key is stored in the Pixis machine and then the pharmacy will be delivering your medication syringe labeled for you. You will also need a standard IV pump. Yeah. So you're going to get your PCA channel and you're going to fit that onto your IV pump and you should hear it click, make sure it's secure. You're going to need your PCA key. So we'll put that there. And then you're going to want to get your, uh, your syringe, your medication syringe, and attach the PCA tubing. Again, you will be doing this with a second nurse. We do not prime the tubing manually, we prime it on the pump. When you open up the tubing, the single end attaches to the syringe and the Y portion goes toward the patient. So you use aseptic technique and attach that connection. And then you're going to go ahead and place the syringe into the pump. Make sure that when you place it, you place it optimally so that you can see the markings on the syringe as well as the medication label. This flange portion fits right under this gray piece and slides right in. And then you turn this clear plastic uh, piece so that it holds the syringe in place. Up here, you're going to turn that knob clockwise until these arms grab the top of the um, syringe and make sure that you have everything out of the way so that you can close the door. So I'm going to go ahead and close the door and then I'm going to turn the key um, to the program position at the moment. Next we need to go ahead and channel select and then we're going to go ahead and select Monoject 60 and it's asking us to confirm the syringe size. So I'm going to confirm. Now we're checking our orders with our second RN, and in this case, our order is for hydromorphone, and our order is for standard. Um, your concentration should be listed, um, but you want to double check. In this case, our order is for six milligrams per 30 mLs. And then I'm again confirming. And again, you will be um, entering the orders that you have for your patient. Press next to confirm, so I'm doing that. Now it's asking me to confirm the pause limits to, to verify that. So there's a button down here, you push pause limits, and I will be checking to make sure that this uh, it matches my orders. You can make changes, but in this case, I'm going to uh, confirm to move ahead. You never want to disable the end tidal CO2. Hit confirm. And our order in this case is for PCA dose only. And my order on my pretend order sets here says 0 0.2 milligrams. And then follow these buttons along the left hand side. So our lockout interval in this case is for 10 minutes. Uh, the maximum limit, yes, we do have one in this pretend order set. So it says 2 milligrams per 4 mLs. Then I'm going to go down to the loading dose, 
my pretend order set does not have a loading dose, so I will hit no. And then it tells me to close and lock the door. So I'm gonna lock the door and then hit confirm, following the prompts. Attach the dose request cord. So again, there's a, a PCA patient controlled button and this the red dot needs to match up to the red dot on the front panel here. Okay, and then it's telling me to press start, but what have we not done yet? We have not primed our tubing. So that's what we need to do. We prime our tubing on the pump. So instead of hitting start, I'm going to go under options. And I'm looking for what I need. I don't see it here, so I'm going to go page down. Oh, there it is, prime set with syringe. Set the key to program position, so I'm gonna turn my key back to the programming position and it tells me to prime this set with the syringe. Do not prime with the disposable set connected to the patient. So we don't want to give them any air or a medication bolus. So at this point, I'm going to prime. The prime button is here, and I'm going to be watching that fluid come down to the point where this tubing Y is off, right about here. So when I push this button, I need to press and hold until I see that fluid get down to this point. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just watching where it's at here. A little bit more. Okay. And it's almost reached that point. Okay, when I re reach the Y, then this next portion that I'm going to fill is going to be with the carrier fluid, which I've already pre-primed my tubing over here, and it is on the pump. I can take that off of the pump, attach this, and just flush that through quickly with the saline, or I can do that on the pump. So we'll use aseptic technique again. And for this portion, we'll attach the tubing, make sure my roller clamp is open. Okay. For here, for this, our uh, priming volume was 2.3 milliliters, which will be captured. And that's important to account for all of the uh, medication and where it has gone. So we'll exit out of there. And I'm going to go over to channel A. I'm going to go over to channel A and I'm going to go to my uh, guardrail fluids and we will just uh, quickly do an IV maintenance so that I can run the volume through. And we will go with a fast rate just to get this little portion of tubing uh, primed. And it's probably not gonna be much more than a few mLs, but we're gonna go ahead and hit start until I see the fluid dripping out the end. Okay. And so now we know that we have primed our tubing all the way to the end and then our medication stops here. And we're ready to get this connected to our patient. So once we have our tubing primed, we're gonna go ahead and uh, adjust our uh, carrier fluid to the rate that's on our orders, but it'll be a, a low like TKO type rate. In this case, uh, our orders are for 10 mLs per hour and the volume um, just put a volume that will last for a while here and then i can start there and then we're going to go back and focus on the pca here because we need to make sure we've locked this door um, so that it's secure and we'll go to channel b and these were our settings with our second nurse checking verifying and then we can hit start okay 
But what have we not done yet? We have not attached our end tidal CO2 and per our hospital policy, the patients who are on a PCA have to have continuous pulse oximetry as well as this end tidal CO2 um, tubing attached. So I'm going to put this down so that, we, and um, we have, let's just say, attached that to, a, to the patient now. And let's turn our attention to this tubing. So this is the end tidal CO2 tubing. There is a yellow um, end here that if you twist this portion, this here, you will see the yellow goes to yellow. So you just turn that clockwise, turn on the channel, and then this will go on the patient. I'll put this the uh, prongs into the patient's nares, and the reservoir will be capturing the end tidal CO2. Uh, it's good to advise the patient to keep this on at all times because if this comes off and it's no longer registering, the pump will shut off automatically based on the settings for both the end tidal CO2 um, as well as uh, your respirations on pulse oximetry with pulse oximetry. So you want to make sure to educate the patient to keep this on at all times because the pause limits will uh, be such that the pump will shut off if it is not capturing end tidal CO2 or respirations. If your patient needs supplemental oxygen, there is a connection here that you can uh, connect to wall oxygen or portable oxygen. Sure. Uh, before you leave the room that the, you have secured the PCA key and uh, replace it to the Pixis machine. You also want to make sure that the PCA patient control button is in the patient's reach and that they are able to use that. And uh, be sure to follow all hospital policies and procedures related to PCA as uh, those policies are updated from time to time and make sure to obtain and document your vital signs per policy. Just to reiterate, a key important part of this uh, video is to make sure that you are priming your PCA tubing in the appropriate order. Do follow policy, follow the instructions inside the packaging to make sure that you are only priming the medication to the Y and that the remaining portion uh, before starting the PCA is the carrier fluid to avoid any complications with the patient. And be sure, lastly, to um, put away that PCA key in the Pixis um, and secure that and make sure that you are using your PCA uh, stickers to label your tubing.